with the conclusion of the final week of the regular season in college football. The expected transfer portal movement has already begun. We're going to rank the biggest priorities of need for the Cardinals football team next season while also talking about some of the uh, players that have already opted to enter the portal. So with that being said, let's get right on into the show. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome in to another episode of the Locked On the Louisville podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. I serve as a credential media member for Cardinal Sports Zone. I also do some PA announcement work for the university in various sports. I want to take this time to say thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. And just a reminder, the Locked On the Louisville podcast is free on all streaming services, your team, five days a week, every day. The expected and very highly anticipated Transfer portal movement has already begun. We're going to talk about and rank the biggest areas of need by position next season for the Louisville Cardinals. We'll also talk about Travion Cooley and Caleb Banks entering the portal recently and what it means for their respective position groups. So we'll start out by ranking the biggest areas of need for the Cardinals. Now granted, um, before we start, just a reminder, the portal doesn't really officially open until December 5th for the FBS. Um, but a reminder that with the one-time transfer rule in place that you can become immediately eligible next season, there's going to be many players that enter the portal uh, from almost all schools. Um, it's to be expected. So if Louisville has many players enter the portal, I mean, of course it's unfortunate But it is um, how the current landscape of college football and college sports are right now. So it's to be expected, and it makes it that much more critical that, in return, Louisville's coaching staff really um, knocks it out of the park with the transfer portal um, with the additions coming in. Now, granted, there are some big areas of need, some large holes to fill for next year's team, we're going to rank all of the positions from quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, offensive line, defensive line, linebackers, secondary, so on and so forth. So let's start out with number one. Number one, I have the linebacker position. Um, for me, this is pretty um, straightforward when you look at the players that will be moving on. Monty Montgomery, Momo Sonogo, uh, I think both of those players will not be Cardinals next year. You're losing both of those guys, uh, both redshirt seniors. Um, So replacing both of those starting linebackers, along with Yasir Abdullah, I actually uh, am classifying Yasir Abdullah as an outside linebacker in this exercise rather than an edge rusher. So having to replace, in my opinion, the ACC Defensive Player of the Year, and two veteran linebackers in Momo Sonogo, who led the team in tackles, and Monty Montgomery, a player that has been in this system for a handful of seasons. That's a a, a big priority to fill. Obviously, you have some younger players that look to step up. Obviously, Ben Perry is a budding star. Uh, Marvin Dallas is also a senior, so you lose some depth there. Uh, Jalen Alderman, Dorian Jones, um, K.J. Cloyd, so on and so forth. Cam Wilson... Um, Popeye Williams is a player to focus on Stan Quan Clark if he ends up signing. So there is some talent waiting in the wings, but I think that going out and getting immediate help, um, division one, uh, battle tested, um, power five level caliber players that have many, um, you know, snaps under their belt. Um, and just being able to, you know, have veteran presence at the linebacker position, which obviously is very critical for a football team. I think that that is the biggest position of need for the Cardinals. Number two, in my opinion, is quarterback. Now, granted, I think that Pierce Clarkson is the future. Obviously, um, the rest of the fan base does as well, the coaching staff, so on and so forth. He's very, very good. Uh, It seems like the uh, perception, though, is that Louisville will opt to go with a one-year grad transfer to be the bridge um, 
to the Pierce Clarkson era at Louisville. So Pierce Clarkson likely will redshirt next year and then play as a redshirt freshman the following season in 2024. At least that's kind of what the vibes are, what the perception is right now. Obviously, that might not be the case. Pierce Clarkson could be competing right away. But I think that there is a certain level of, um, you know, I, I guess you could say danger or even like um, – there's some concern, you know, forcing a true freshman into immediately starting right away. Now, granted, he could rise into that position and flourish, but, um, you know, getting a year to learn the system under um, a grad transfer quarterback that has played um, significantly at a, a previous destination could be, um, you know, what the doctor ordered for Louisville. But granted, I think that regardless, a lot of Louisville's issues this year were from uh, – you know, lackluster quarterback play. I think that Malik Cunningham had his moments, but he struggled with injuries throughout. Brock Doman had some moments as well, but consistency was a big issue. So quarterback is the key here offensively for me because we saw what happens when the quarterback play is not up uh, to standard for the Louisville Cardinals uh, this season and how the defense pretty much had to win multiple games for the team. So uh, moving right along, I think the secondary combining both cornerback and safety for this number three um, slot is where I'm going with um, losing some players. Obviously, Keytrail Clark likely to go on to the professional level. Uh, Chandler Jones, a player that you're losing as well. Kendrick Duncan Jr. came back for his sixth season. He's likely gone. Well, he's likely gone. He is gone. Um, so you don't have a lot of depth at that position. Sure, you have a player like Aaron Williams coming in, uh, you know, assuming that he uh, signs with the Cardinals. Um, you have some talented guys coming in, but still needing to, um, you know, address that. You have Quincy Riley, MJ Griffin, um, you know, Josh Minkins coming back, but still I think that um, – you know, addressing the quarterback or cornerback and safety depth would be um, a smart decision for the Cardinals to, um, you know, revamp that secondary room. Moving right along, wide receivers number four for me, pretty self-explanatory. Um, you know, who knows whether or not Tyler Hudson comes back. If he does, maybe that need slides a little bit down in the rankings. You have some players like DeAndre Moore, assuming that he signs. William Fowles, four-star from Miami, assuming that he signs as, as well. But um, it, it's evident that Louisville needs some help at wide receiver. They need some uh, depth as well. So even signing multiple high school recruits and getting players like Tyler Hudson back if D Wiggins decides to come back still, I think that you could use um, a home run threat, some speed, um, a very solid route runner uh, would be huge as well to create separation um, because um, wide receivers creating separation was an issue uh, toward the end of the season. Edge is number five. You lose Yaya Diaby. Sure. You have some solid players waiting in the wings. Um, Vic Tone Brown uh, is one of those guys that I expect to play much more next season. You have Adonijah Green, assuming that he signs, possibly Ruben Bain, uh, the top 100 player from Miami, if he were to sign. Um, but uh, still, you know, those are true freshmen. So looking for a direct replacement for Yaya Diaby that can replicate some of his production alongside Ashton Gelati, who will be a junior. Number seven is interior defensive line. Caleb Banks just um, entered the transfer portal, uh, but you still have some solid players at the defensive line position. Dez Tell was very solid this year. Jared Dawson, uh, Mason Rieger, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, you have Tofik Thomas, the uh, true freshman who redshirted this season, and possibly Jermaine Lole will come back from his season-ending injury. No confirmation, but it seems like uh, the vibes are that he will is that he will come back, so we'll see in that regard. Offensive line, um, you're having to replace some solid players. Uh, Trevor Reed, um, also, Caleb Chandler, one of the best offensive linemen in, in the ACC. You have some players returning, but I still think that with the talent that you have coming in, with the returning players, you could still go out to get one to two impact offensive linemen. Tight end, you lose Marshawn Ford. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. If Jamari Johnson signs, I think that he is an instant impact player. Um, but you have some some solid options at tight end. Uh, Des Melton, Francis Sherman, but still uh, going out and getting a possible grad transfer at tight end could be in the works. Uh, number nine for me is running back. Um, sure, Travion Cooley, uh, Tyon Evans, and likely Jalen Mitchell will not be a part of the team next season. You have Jawar Jordan and Maurice Turner, and if Ruben Owens signs, I think that it's just a matter of um, 
you know, addressing depth. So linebacker, quarterback, and secondary are the three biggest position needs um, in the offseason, both the transfer portal and finishing out this high school class. But I want to dive into um, some of the positions that have already been, um, you know, hit by uh, the transfer portal. We'll begin with the running back position where, um, you know, Travion Cooley has entered the portal and the Cardinals will need to address depth. Uh, we'll do that here in just a second after we talk about our friends over at Upside. Um, inflation has us all thinking about different ways to cut back, whether it's driving less, dining out less, or buying less from the grocery store. We can all agree there's nothing fun about less. That's why I started using Upside. Upside is an incredible app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, or dines out. With Upside, I don't have to cut back because I get cash back on every purchase. To get started, download the free Upside app and use my promo code LOCKED and get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Download the free Upside app and use my promo code LOCKED to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more using the promo code LOCKED. Also want to take this time to tell you about our friends over at LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Um, it's very easy to create a free job post, uh, add the job, and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools are available like screening questions. They make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. Um, so LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Hey, Cardinal fans, thanks again for making Locked On Louisville your first listen. For your second listen, check out Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. As I mentioned in the last segment, uh, in my opinion, the running back position is ranked ninth at the very, very bottom in terms of biggest areas of need for next season. Um, obviously, there will be some turnover. Travion Cooley announced on Sunday that he was entering the transfer portal. Um, not necessarily a surprise. He has not played in um, a handful of weeks due to personal reasons. Um, Jalen Mitchell has also not uh, played in multiple weeks. It is um, understood or I guess uh, predicted that he will not be back next season. Um, not necessarily a surprise there. And Tyon Evans missed the game against Kentucky. And rumor has it that he is preparing for the NFL draft. So obviously that means that he will not be on the team next season. So you lose those three running backs. Um, so Dalton, why is the running back position that far down uh, on the priority list? Well, two words, Reuben Owens. Obviously, the number one running back in the country um, committed to Louisville. It's a obvious point that he has to sign with Louisville and make it to campus and be a part of the team for this ranking to make sense. But look, I think that not just because he's a Louisville commit, Ruben Owens has some of the most impressive film from a running back that I have seen alongside um, Derek Henry, Leonard Fournette, Noel Devine, so on and so forth. Very, very impressive. Over 7,000 yards in Texas high school football. Something that is not easily done. I think that he is probably going to be the presumed starter from day one next season or at the very least um, receiving um, a mixture of carries. But not only that, I think that um, with the emergence of Jawar Jordan, the Syracuse transfer, um, Ended the season with a couple of performances over 100 rushing yards per game. Uh, and Maurice Turner, the true freshman, that showed uh, some promise as well. So you have three very capable options. Now, granted, uh, what we saw this season when the injury bug struck the running back room, that there are some uh, depth issues that need to be addressed. Um, you could handle this a couple different ways. Number one, you could take uh, a... Um, risk on, or I, I should say you could take the um, 
you know, the shot on getting a developmental prospect, uh, developmental high school prospect that you feel can mold into a solid contributor in years to come. Or you could go to the transfer portal uh, like you did with the Jawar Jordan recruitment and um, get a player that, you know, has high upside. It's one of those um, high reward, low risk moves, and it's just a depth move. Um, at the very least. So I think that I'm um, getting the number to four, maybe five. Obviously, that's kind of where you're looking at. It's easier said than done to um, go to recruits and transfers and say, hey, look, I want you to come here to play for the Cardinals, but we do have the number one running back in college football coming in. Obviously, it's not a sure thing. There have been five stars in the past that haven't lived up to expectations. I personally think that Ruben Owens will, um, but regardless, it's going to be hard to convince um, you know, high caliber rated running backs to come to Louisville and compete with Ruben Owens, uh, Jawar Jordan, and Maurice Turner. But I do think um, you could add a very talented running back into the mix. And, um, you know, it's been known that Louisville likes to go by committee. I think that um, it's just going to be tough to do that with the uh, players that they could have next season. So I think that it's probably likely that they'll go with the the transfer portal um, to go get a running back if they decide to do that, which they likely will with only three scholarship running backs for next season. Um, but you could also take a chance with a high school prospect that you feel uh, has solid um, you know, upside that uh, all is needed is development, but there hasn't really been any high school running backs that have been talked about outside of um, a couple of players, um, so on and so forth. So I'm not necessarily sure um, which route they would go with, but regardless, you know, I will say people will get um, a little salty. Um, you know, there's been talks, oh, Travion Cooley has been wanting to transfer since he stepped foot on campus. Say whatever you will. I do think that um, it seemed like the writing was on the wall uh, early on in the season when Cooley um, wasn't necessarily getting a lot of, um, you know, snaps. He did in the season with 59 carries for 278 yards. Tyon Evans um, had uh, 83 carries for 525 yards. Um, obviously, no surprise that Jalen Mitchell, who only had 10 for 48, uh, didn't necessarily have that great of a season you know, factoring in the injuries that he sustained throughout the year, so on and so forth, the lack of a um, significant role in terms of production. No surprise here. I think that the writing was on the wall with Mitchell leaving. Um, Tyon Evans, it seemed like this was going to be a situation to where he was going to spend one year at Louisville and then go for the NFL draft. We wish him the best of luck. Wish Travion the best of luck as well. Wish Jalen the best of luck. Um in their respective um, next destinations. I think they're all three going to be spectacular players. Uh, there's no hard feelings. Uh, sometimes things, um, you know, just don't work out. I have no problem with players going on and doing what they feel is best for themselves. Uh, fans look at this thinking, oh, it's a selfish, um, you know, act. And granted, I think that, um, you know, not finishing out the season, you can call it for what you will. Some people say it's selfish. Some people say you need to take care of your own, um, you know, your own interests. I don't really have a stance on it. I mean, I, I think that a player does what he feels is best. And that that's, that is essentially what it is at the end of the day. So, uh, um, some promise for the Louisville rushing attack next season, obviously with Jawar Jordan and Maurice Turner uh, coming back. Um, and then you have Ruben Owens as well, the number one running back rated in the country in this uh, year's senior high school football class. Assuming that he signs with the Cardinals, um, it's going to be a very exciting rushing attack for next season. Probably still looking to add one to two more depth pieces for next year. Uh, so, some unfortunate losses due to the transfer portal and the NFL draft, but I think that the Louisville rushing attack will be just fine in the end. Uh, another transfer portal addition um, coming up, defensive lineman Caleb Banks has decided to transfer as well. We'll talk about what that means for the interior defensive line here in just a second after we talk about our friends over at Nissan. 
Our partners at Nissan have worked with us to create a new segment across the Locked On College Network titled Thrilling Moments, where we highlight the most exciting play or moment from the Louisville Cardinals weekend action or throughout the history of our alma mater. This week's thrilling moment comes from the Sunday selection show for the NCAA Volleyball Tournament. The bracket was revealed. The ACC champion Louisville Cardinals, 26-2 on the season, were gifted the uh, last number one seed. Uh, for their region. So uh, very, very exciting for the team trying to make it back to the Final Four and avenging a loss to the eventual national champion, Wisconsin Badgers. This segment has been inspired by the thrilling new designs featured across Nissan's new lineup of vehicles. Pursue what thrills you in the all-new Frontier Armada or Pathfinder today, available now at NissanUSA.com. So heading into the final segment, discussing Caleb Banks, the defensive lineman that has entered the transfer portal on Sunday. He was one of two players to enter the transfer portal on Sunday, along with running back uh, Travion Cooley. Banks, before the season, the six foot seven redshirt freshman was seemingly poised for a solid uh, season of production. Six foot seven, three hundred pound native of Southfield, Michigan. Um, a late addition to the 2021 class. I didn't necessarily see a lot of action uh, this season. Didn't see any snaps uh, the previous year. Only two tackles on the season. Uh, one solo, one assist. He had a sack and a forced fumble. Um, this season only played in two games. Had the forced fumble against Wake Forest in that very, very weird but um, welcomed um, defensive performance from the Cardinals and then had a tackle in the um, September matchup against the South Florida Golden Bulls. So um, it was an instance to where I think that I was kind of surprised that Banks didn't see a lot more playing time um, this season when we heard about the coaching staff raving about uh, his work in the offseason. Obviously, Des Tell and Jared Dawson being the um, – the go-to guys on the interior at nose tackle for the Cardinals. But with Jermaine Lole going out in the first game of the season against Syracuse, I personally thought that this was going to be a season that we needed to see Caleb Banks step up. Um, but the reality is he just didn't necessarily get that opportunity on the field. So this move, albeit I think that uh, there is possibility of him having been a solid um, you know, or being in line for a solid line of production, I think that um, it doesn't surprise me that he entered the portal whatsoever, only having a couple games worth of action um, with the opportunity to become immediately eligible, going to, um, you know, a program where he's going to get more playing time. The reality of the matter is that there is an opportunity that he may end up you know, in a situation just like he was this year if he were to come back. So I understand it, although I think that he would be in line for more production next season. I understand the move because it seems like, obviously, Jermaine Lole, uh, his status is up in the air. I saw that Mark Blankenbaker tweeted out on Sunday that he's confident that Lole is back. Um, it would make sense for him to come back to boost his NFL draft stock, but if he comes back, that is going to be a big um, returnee for the Cardinals into your defensive line, and you have to factor in the um, the defensive scheme to where it's only um, usually one nose tackle at a time in the 3-4 base. So um, the limited playing time, limited scheme fits. You have Jermaine Lole, Des Tell coming back. Obviously, assuming that these players come back, there is the opportunity, I guess, that players can enter the portal unexpectedly. But as of right now, Des Tell, Jared Dawson, um, you also have Jermaine Lole. So, and then you have Taufik Thomas, the redshirt freshman or the true freshman from this season, was solid in the offseason as well. I would expect him to be in line for uh, some snaps next season. So, um, I think that the interior defensive line for me is at number – Six, just because um, I think it is going to depend on Lole's decision because I think Lole, um, you know, having an injury in the offseason and then obviously having another injury to end the season, you know, shaking off rust for next year will be a thing to watch for. But still, I'm not necessarily worried if he were to come back because that would be huge for the Louisville defensive line. So the two guys that have uh, officially entered the portal, Travion Cooley, 
um, Caleb Banks. We wish them the best. Um, the running back room having to deal with some turnover, but with the guys returning, um, you know, and George Jordan and Maurice Turner, and then uh, Ruben Owens likely coming in. The only additions to the running back room would probably be depth moves. But the defensive line, you could always work to try to get uh, some more disruptors in the middle. I think that the Louisville defensive line was pretty solid uh, this season, especially with low lay out, having to deal with injury. So with low lay back, uh, having Des Tell as well, a year of uh, starting in the ACC, Jared Dawson you know, in the rushing attack, um, you know, the Louisville defensive line, Caleb Banks is a player with a lot of upside. It's one of those moves that you wish it would have worked out for uh, his career at Louisville. You wish him the best, but um, I think that um, this is going to be a loss that the Cardinals will be able to manage and um, be able to address directly. So, um, Obviously, the portal doesn't start until or doesn't open officially until December 5th, so Buckle up is all I can say. There's going to be a lot of movement. There will be players that enter the portal for Wolf. I think that it's going to be like that for every every school. Who's it going to be? I have no clue. Hopefully it's not many players that have seen significant um, production this past season, but you just never know. Um, but there's no mistake that Louisville has some work to do in the transfer portal. So linebacker, quarterback, secondary are the three top areas of need, in my opinion. Um, that's going to wrap up this second edition on this Monday episode of the show. As we move throughout the week, we're going to talk um, about football moving forward, um, heading into the bowl game, basketball, football recruiting, so on and so forth. So be sure to check that out. Um, thanks again for making Locked On Global your first listen of the day. That's going to wrap up this edition of the show. Everyone have a great rest of your start of the week. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.